Hi, Emma. Hello. Hi, Echo. Come on in. Hi. Hello, buddy. Have you got into mischief? At St Margaret's, worried owners Emma and Echo have rushed down to the practice with their 11-year-old cat, Spuddy. So, I hear this guy's gagging and retching. Is that right? Yeah, he hasn't eaten for the last 24 hours, but he can't even drink milk at the moment or, you know, water. All right, in a bit of distress. I mean, I don't know how relevant this is, but he did eat a very large mouse last week. Spuddy's the sort of cat that, that does tend to be sick quite often because of all the weird things he eats. I mean, usually he just coughs something up and then that's the end of it. But this time it just kept going on, so we rushed him down. So if okay. I get you to hold both of his front legs okay. with your two hands... OK. All right, mate. He's Good got the boy. sharpest claws. So unfortunately, I can't see as far back as I would like to okay. because the tongue, he jams it up into yeah. the top of his mouth. So what I think we're going to need to do is knock out your boy and okay. have a good look down his throat. Sure. OK. Because my feeling is, is that we're going to find something that yeah. shouldn't be there. Yeah. Yeah. I think what concerns me with this case is that Spuddy Boy normally eats for England, but he has just stopped eating, he's stopped drinking, and now he's gagging. So he's clearly having some issues with his ability not only to eat, but also breathe, and that's a major concern. All right, will you say goodbye to your boy? Bye, Spud. He's very important in our lives. Yeah, we, we're very fond of him. We're very fond of him. Hey. Yeah, he's got some very sharp nails, so watch yourself. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Look at them, talons. Head nurse Emma yeah, is helping Scott well, find buddy. out what might be stuck in Spuddy's throat. What do you reckon it is? It could be anything from a grass blade to, you know, material, string, all that sort of stuff. All right. All right, buddy. Yeah, OK, good boy. Oh, it's a bit scary, it? isn't it? We're all okay. right, buddy. These things with cats, with any animal, are what we consider emergency procedures. Um, the fact that he can't really swallow, he can't eat, he can't drink, we class that as an emergency. So hopefully um, Scott will be able to find something relatively easy and get him into recovery. So at least now with him asleep, I can see down the back of the throat, I can see his larynx, it's all fine. All right, buddy. Ooh, what's that? Oh, I've got it. Whatever it is. Oh, what the hell is that? It's absolutely massive. My goodness. Look, it's still coming. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Oh, oh mate. Buddy. It's amazing to see a three or four inch long bit of grass. Absolutely unbelievable. And you can just imagine how infuriating that must be to be stuck in your throat. It's awful. It's massive. So what he'd done is he'd swallowed it and, and then, then he coughed at just the wrong time and it's gone whew, up into his nose and it's just been going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. So Aww. he sneezes and it goes up and then he coughs and it goes that way and it just keeps going backwards and forwards around his soft palate. Oh, bless him. But look at that. I mean, think how massive that would have been in his tiny little nose. Not so much the mouse tail that mummy thought it was going to be. That is a ripper. This type of procedure, when they have this sort of foreign body, is actually really rewarding because the cat is significantly unwell. You quickly and deftly treat it. You find what's causing the problem, and they go home and they're happy. Spud! Hello! Hello! <laughs> Look how big that is. Oh, that looks horrid. Oh, and sharp and pointy as sharp well. Sharp and long. It's oh, horrific. Yeah. yeah, no wonder he was in such discomfort. It's not the best of dishes for you, I think, my friend. I think you need to stick to those mice. He seems like he's back to his old self, so. Yeah, he seems completely fine. Bye, girls. Bye. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Bye. Well, it's a good result for Spuddy, but this little emergency has really put me behind schedule. Today I'm off to Wales for something completely different and I really need to get on the road. Scott's taking a break from his three practices and heading to the country for a working holiday. After making London his home for the past 18 years, the Australian vet is exploring another possible move. The idea first came up when a client of mine mentioned that they had a relative that runs a big rural practice in the beautiful green rolling hills of Wales. Now, I have always had a bit of a daydream that one day I'd pack up the family and head to a completely different environment, somewhere with clean air and wide open spaces, and become a country vet. So Scott's putting the dream to the test. 
working at a local practice in the historic town of St. Clair's for the next few days. I'll be the first to admit that I'm going to be completely out of my comfort zone and I'm pretty nervous. It's been a very long time, pretty much since my university days, since I've seen the business end of a cow or a horse. So it'll be very interesting to see if I can convince the locals that this city slicker's got what it takes. Up to you. Yep. Hello there, ladies. How you doing? Good, Good. how are you? Good. I was actually trying to work out how to say hello in Welsh. How do you say it? Hello. hello. Oh, so you just say it with a Welsh accent. Yeah, Keep it, keeping it simple. Yeah, well, yeah. you definitely <laughs> need to do that for me. Welcoming Scott to this country vet practice are Fionn and Ang Harrod. I am supposed to be seeing the boss. Whereabouts is he? Straight through there. Wish me luck. Good, Good luck. luck. Hi there, David. Hi, you must be Scott. Yes, I am. How are you doing? Ah, oh, so pleased to meet you. And welcome. you. Yeah, welcome to beautiful Wales. Thank you very much. Um, Today, Scott is reporting to one of the got? practice's well, head vets, yeah, we've got David Stone. Today. So we've got a busy day on farm, so I need to get you some proper gear. Yeah, not my usual kit, I'll be honest, but uh, look, I'm happy to get stuck in with the farm work. Right, let's get you kitted up and then we'll crack on. Sounds good. Good. Forget any notion of lazing around watching the grass grow in sleepy old Wales. We're into it straight away. First up, David has an interesting challenge for Scott at a local farm. Good girl. Up you go. This should be 51, David. This bee farm is run by four very independent Welsh women. There are three generations here. My grandmother and then my mother and aunt and I. Everybody has an opinion, but as long as we get there in the end, that, that's the important bit. Hello there, ladies. I'm Virginia. Virginia. Hi, Virginia. Hi, Marga. An Olga. unsuspecting Hello. Scott is Hi, about Stephanie. to find out Hi, what Stephanie. the Roberts Isabel. ladies Isabel. have in store. I'm feeling a little bit of intimidation with you four <laughs> already. Do you yeah. normally feel like that when you come here, David? Oh, I've got used to it over the years. <laughs> <laughs> they got used to the girls. I'm acclimatised. <laughs> right. So what have you got me here for today? We've got a pedigree bull. So uh, we need you now to have a look at him to make sure that he's fit for breeding. All right, well, shall we unleash the beast? Let's go. If he's used to smaller animals, seeing a bull is going to be uh, totally different. I'm very worried about seeing this bull. I'm sure he's an absolute giant. Bulls can be a bit aggressive, they can be dangerous. So I think we've got to be careful in this situation. Oh, great. <laughs> it's tiny. <laughs> bull. There he is. I was expecting something this high. Uh, you'll grow into a big bull eventually. <laughs> let's go down. Let's go look at him, Scott. Hello, boys. Luckily, Scott's first patient is a young bull called Merlin, with his mate Colin keeping an eye on the visitor from the city. If you look carefully, you'll see he's got a tremendous hindquarters. He's really well built. And so that's why they feel he has potential as a bull. So what you're saying is that he's got a bigger bum than the other one. And from a beef cattle perspective, he's going to pass it on to any offspring that he has, which is also That's right, very yes, positive. And, and produce very good beef calves as well. But looks aren't everything when it comes to breeding. Dave and I commence the examination of this bull from head to toe to make sure he's up to scratch and he's going to be a good dad to all the Roberts family's new calves. He's got a lovely temperament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, he's good nice. boy. He's just very strong. He's, you know, he's a very strong animal. But otherwise, he's lovely and quiet. You can handle him quite nicely. We'll just check his teeth, see what his teeth look like in his mouth. Yeah. Good alignment of the teeth with the upper jaw. Would you like to have a, have a turn and, and examine him? Have a look at him? Yeah, sure. <laughs> this bull is maybe not as big as I expected, but it's certainly bigger than all the patients that I treat in Richmond. Good boy. Are they like dogs and cats? Do they respond to being talked to? Yes. Yes, yeah, definitely. yes they do. Definitely. Oh, there they know, you go. They know your voice. Oh, oh, hello. You probably haven't heard my accent before around these parts, I wouldn't have thought. <laughs> hey. G'day, mate. How's it going? Hey. Hey, you're a handsome fella. Oh, it's incredible. Incredible to look at these beautiful brown eyes close up. Very nice. All right, let's check his height. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. My initial impression is that it's running faster than I thought it was going to be. But just same with dogs and cats, the younger they are, the faster the heartbeat. Yeah. His eyes seem good, his heart seems good. 
Everything else is looking very, very good. But at some point, I know I'm going to have to go to the business end. All right, Merlin, I promise to be gentle. If the bull hasn't got good testicles, then he won't be able to work as a breeding bull. Getting nice and close to him. Jeez. Okay, grab both testicles. <laughs> Get a nice firm grip there, Scott. <laughs> well, Scott's definitely got his hands full, but he's got great technique. Feeling good? <laughs> They're very firm. Oh, they're very impressive. God, I feel myself blushing. It's a nightmare. Well, in the bull, um, he likes his scratches and uh, he likes to be with people. Obviously, they're bonding. Good, just check them for symmetry and size. Check for any lumps and bumps. And they're of a good size for his age. Everything feels great. They do feel great. Ladies, I think that your bull, hopefully, he's got the equipment suitable. He's ready to go. I think the Roberts family are going to be very happy to know that their bull's up to the job. I'm just not quite sure that I am. Okay, big guy. There you go. Job Good done. Boys. But there's still plenty more to come. It's farm stuff. It's day two of Scott's working holiday in the Welsh farming community of St Clair's where he's exploring the idea of one day becoming a country vet. Right. Ready to crack on? Yeah, absolutely. Today, he's up early, helping out head farm vet right, David so at a dairy cattle dairy farm. farm. David obviously is the lead vet here. He's the man that knows what he's doing, and I'm the humble pupil. Yeah, I've got one for you as well, Scott. We'll get the okay. scanner out for you now on the front bit. Just Scott and David are using mobile wow. ultrasound equipment kid, to check it? which yeah, dairy cows are pregnant. Yeah. It's uh, a very interesting kit. It looks straight out of Star Trek. Kit. It's basically just an ultrasound. The same thing that we would use in our clinics back in Richmond, but this is designed for internal use. And I'm not very much looking forward to where I'm going to have to put it. <laughs> have you got an image? Oh, wow, yeah. Cool. Yeah, good. so that's the ultrasound scan image I can see right in front that's of me. That's right, yes. Okay, right. let's go. I'm actually feeling surprisingly nervous, way more nervous than I ever expected that I would. I'm an experienced vet, but not experienced when it comes to large animals. So I feel like I'm almost going back to school. Morning, girls. How are you doing? I just hope I'm up to the challenge. All right, so here's the first. A lot of patience for the day. In you go. Good girl. Waiting patiently in line for 40 cows ready for testing. Hello, ladies. I promise to be gentle. <laughs> it's really important that every cow on the farm gets pregnant every year. If they produce a calf, then afterwards they can produce milk. It's just like when you're a mum, you only produce breast milk once you've had a baby, and the same applies in cows. I'm just going to uh, scan the first few cows. Yep. And if you just watch to see what I'm doing, and then later on, I'll, you can have a turn, have a go, right? All right. So we're going to use the scanner to see if they're in calf. Just put that, get the probe in there. Most of the time, these girls have a lovely time eating grass in the beautiful Welsh fields. And the farmers, of course, keep very close tabs on them. But every now and again, they do have to get them in and do medical procedures on them. It has to be done, but hopefully we'll be as gentle and as kind as possible. Good again. The mark with chalk. Give the bucket blue when she's in calf. So you know all pregnant, all the blue cows are, are in calf. I've got a nice blue tail. That's right. Nice right. blue mark on the back. Yeah. Okay, next. So you gotta watch them because they will they will barge on. Yeah. I'm like a cow bouncer. That's right. <laughs> You're doing a great job there. Scott. Thank you very much. <laughs> now it's Scott's turn. I know that Scotch will find a, a challenge. And just putting his arm into the cow, just a whole, it's a whole foreign environment. And I think he's really got his work cut out today. I, I've scanned and I've checked her. So we'll now give you a go and see what you can find in the cow. Okay. So you all ready? You yes. All <laughs> is, is the scanner turned on? Uh, it's definitely on, so at least the oh, equipment's right. I can't okay, blame good. the equipment. Okay, good. Let's see, let's see how we go. Okay. It's been such a long time that I've worked with cows and so I really want to make sure that I don't embarrass myself too much. I'm totally put off by the sound effect she's given me. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Come on, get on with it and we'll see, how, see, how, see what you find. Okay, I'm going in. So, oh man. 
that's an experience I haven't had in 17 years. That is, oh man. I'll be quite happy if Scott can just find the womb initially. Is it in the top left-hand corner of the screen? Would it be there? If he finds a pregnancy, I'll be really pleased. What can I see in here? Okay, I'm trying to find her uterus. Just scan left and right, move the probe over the womb, just left and right. It's absolutely amazing to be able to use an ultrasound like this in the field. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? I can tell from Scott's expression how he's getting on. And initially I can see he's really concentrating, he's focusing on what he's doing. And then eventually you can see his eyes light up. Oh, wait a minute, there we go. And you think, wow, that's, that's, that's the eureka moment. He's seen something wonderful, great, fantastic. Okay, teacher, um, please tell me, I'm, I'm pretty sure this girl's in calf. Yeah, she is in calf. Well done, Scott. Oh, thank <laughs> God. She's in calf, she can go. And then, of course, you have to move on to the next cow, and the next, and the next, and you have to do it all over again. But so far, he's doing great. <laughs> we'll, make a, we'll make a farm bet on you yet, Scott. <laughs> Welcome to Wales. <laughs> all right. This is an incredible experience. It's so out of my comfort zone, uh, but also really exciting and, uh, and interesting and different. I've just got poo on my lens. I've had a, a poo accident. That's nasty. And now I'm covered in poo. How can I wipe that off? David, I just need a nurse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you bring no, nurses? No, there's no nurse. You're, no nurse. You are the nurse. You, you're the vet and the nurse. Excuse me. The local practice is based in the nearby town of St. Clair's, as well as handling farm animals. I just have a little listen to his hat. It also looks after many of the town's pets. Later today, Scott will be coming in to lend a hand. Come on. We've got to go in to see the vet, my darling. But right now, longtime resident Joyce is arriving with her Bichon Frise toots. In you go. Hello, Hello, Joyce. Can you Very good, Joyce. Is it Tuts you've got with you? Yeah, Tuts. You to see Joe, is it? Yeah. He's just a big softy at heart. Yeah, we've had him now for eight years, and he's been a big part of our life. Lately, Joyce's companion has been suffering a painful bladder infection. He's uncomfortable when he's passing water, and he goes off his food, and he ends up with a temperature. Just hope that there's nothing too drastic. Hi, Joyce, how are you? Hello there. Hi, uh, do you want to come on in? Yes. Vet Joe is part of the small yeah, animals team on. and has been treating Toots with antibiotics, but the infection isn't clearing. I can feel he's a bit tender still when I feel on his bladder, right. so definitely that's still the area that he's sore in. Yes. We were a bit suspicious there might be something else underlying, you know, that's causing these infections to recur. I think what we need to do now is just take it to the next sort of stage of, right. of diagnostic, so to try and work out what's going on. Um, and the best thing for that is going to be to do an X-ray. OK. And go from there then, all, all right? All right. You're going to behave yourself. <laughs> Are you? Okay. See you later, baby. Brilliant. Good boy. He's a good boy. I'm just hoping that they don't find anything drastic. So what do you think the worst all the time, don't you? So we've just got to wait and hope for the best. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. Good boy. Hi, Lauren. This is little Toots. Hi, handsome. Vet nurse Lauren will be assisting Joe with the X-ray of Toots's bladder. One of the concerns would be bladder stones, so crystals or little stones that, that form in the bladder itself. It could be a bladder tumour. Obviously, that would be sort of worst-case scenario. Uh, but really, we need to rule out the stones as a, a priority. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. I think we can see what the problem is. Before heading back to the practice's headquarters, Scott is on another assignment, this time with local equine vets, Philip and Kim. Philip mentions about the fact that there's a foal hernia. Now, I haven't done horse surgery since university, so I'm incredibly nervous. I hope I can help, and I hope that Philip has faith in me. Hello. We're going to send you up the paddock, pick up the, the, the foal, and Kim and I are going to start setting up in the barn. OK, okay. I'll get the foal, you yeah. get prepped. That's right. Sounds okay. good. All right, see you in a bit. Right on. OK, okay. Now. Normally, I do these things on my own, so it'll be quite novel to have an extra pair of hands there. 
You don't know what you're in for, do you? <laughs> That's my coat you've got hold of. Don't pull me over. Don't pull me off. He's naughty. Let go. Waiting for Scott well, is horse breeder Di, with her mare Misty you and her cheeky Misty. foal Freddy. I spent a whole lifetime with horses. I don't think I would want to live without the horses. They mean everything to us. Hi there, Di. How are you? I'm very well, Lovely thank you. Lovely to meet Getting you. Getting a bit wet, but there we are. A little bit wet, a little bit windy, but there we are. We're in well, Wales in a field. Can we? Today, the five-month-old is having much-needed surgery to repair a large umbilical hernia. Yeah, you can see so clearly that hernia. It's a, it's a decent-sized oh, one, isn't nasty, it? It's nasty, isn't it? An umbilical hernia is basically a hole in the abdominal wall where the muscles haven't closed after birth. And what happens in Freddie's case is that the abdominal contents will leak out through the hole and lead to a bulge under the skin. I promise I'll look after your boy. I will. We've all made that promise to her, haven't we, girl? Okay. Come on, Freddie. This is all about you, mate. The real danger in Freddie's case is that his intestines can pop through that hole and then their blood supply is affected and literally Di can walk out into the field one morning and find Freddie dead. So it's crucial that we perform this surgery today. Good Misty. Good boy Freddie. Good lad. Misty's there so it's comfort for him. Once he's under anaesthetic he won't know what's going on. But all the time Mum's there, if you, if you take Misty out, well, then he can get upset. Come on, Freddie, good boy. They're like children to us. You know what can happen or can't happen. You hope for the best, obviously. But there's always that element of doubt. In the barn, Philip and Kim are preparing the makeshift operating theatre. OK, I think we've got everything else here, so, yeah, basically we're good to go. And it's not exactly what Scott's used to. Come on, Freddie. Uh, guys, I've got your patient. I walk around the corner into the barn and uh, it's a little rustic. I can't see any shiny lights. I can't see any steel. Um, it is a shed full of hay and we need to do surgery in it. Different. So, Philip, I was going to have a quick fill before That's we That's right, knock. yeah, because it's quite nice to know now exactly what we're dealing with and how big the, the actual opening into the abdomen is. So I can so. get two fingers into right. the hole. Right, OK. Definitely bigger than the hernias that we feel on little dogs and cats back in Oh, yes, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Scott can extrapolate what we're doing back to his own animals in his own surgery in London, and the actual techniques are the same. It's just the scale that changes. Wow. It's like a javelin. Bigger than what you're used to. Scott's first task is to place the large IV catheter into Freddie's neck in preparation for the anaesthetic. Just hope I get it in the right place. Good boy. But finding a vein on a flighty foal is never easy. No. Trying to place an IV catheter into a horse, a massive different world. Where's your blood vessel gone, mate? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. We did our absolute best to get it in as calmly and as safely as possible. But this is a young horse, and horses can sometimes react erratically. And vets can get injured. I think we can see what the problem is. So that's his bladder there, then. Yeah. And my goodness, can you see how many stones he's got in? There's, there's tons. In the Welsh town of St Clair's, so local vet there, Joe yeah. and nurse Lauren and goodness, have discovered the source of nine-year-old Tootsie's bladder infection. One, two, three, four. I can't even really count them, to be honest. It looks like gravel. It's full of stones, much more than I'd anticipated, really, and definitely why he's had so many infections and also why he's been so uncomfortable, the poor boy. I just stuck to the bladder wall. And then there's a couple, you can just see a couple more just in his urethra coming out there. Bladder stones are caused when high levels of minerals build up in urine, forming painful rock-like crystals. When you've got an awful lot of them, any little bits can go down into the urethra and get stuck. You can actually get a blockage in the bladder and that's much more of a concern. Hi, Joyce, do you want to come oh, on through? Yes. Left untreated, the, the bladder can rupture, okay. which can be fatal. He has got quite a lot of stones in his bladder right. then. Right. Yeah. So what do we do? What's the next stage now? I think they're quite small, but because there's so many of them, I think the only thing we can do is surgery. Right. Go in, flush the bladder through and, and take them out. How soon are we looking at? 
I think we can do it today. Yeah, right, straight yeah. away now. Um, sooner the better, really. Yes, because he's it. feeling it, aren't you, baby? Aww. With so yeah, many bladder stones yeah. to remove, oh, Scott yeah, will return to the really practice well. to help Joe with the surgery later today. I think Joyce is quite anxious, obviously, especially now that we need to go to surgery. But I think part of her, she knew there was something else going on, so it's a relief sometimes just to get a diagnosis. Um, and hopefully this is something that we can control. OK, be a good boy. You always will think the worst. And there's nothing you can, you can do about that. So just go home now, cup of coffee, and start chewing my nails. See you later, baby. <laughs> Bye. Hopefully, this will sort it out now. On a nearby farm, tension is high as Scott and the team prepare to anaesthetise five-month-old Freddie. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's in. Good job. Phew. <laughs> Gosh, and that's, uh, that's the easy bit. Yeah. <laughs> Scott is assisting local vets Philip and Kim with repairing the large umbilical hernia protruding from the young foal's belly. So it's really important that we're in a safe place. They're so heavy and they, if they go down in the wrong way, they can catch you out and um, you just need to have your wits about you, really. OK. Good lad. Come to you, Scott. Yeah. Oh, that's a good ball. Oh, what a good ball. <laughs> so you're right there, mate. Yeah. Stuck in the straw. <laughs> right. Once the laughs are over, once Philip's managed to regain uh, his footing, we have to crack on with the surgery. So next stage now, we're going to roll him onto his back. Roll him up. OK. <clears throat> we just crack on and get ourselves scrubbed up and ready to go. I've done countless umbilical hernia repairs in dogs and cats. That's bread and butter for me. But this is on a bigger scale completely with an animal that can kick me in the head. And then I'm being watched by Philip. Quite intimidated right now. You'll be fine. You will. Keeping vigil nearby is Freddie's owner, Di, and his mum, Misty. Nervous now. Very nervous. I'll be glad when it's all over. He's up and with his mum. That's lovely. OK, good yeah. man. I think Scott is doing very well. Although he hasn't handled horses or large animals since he left college, he's got his, his good surgical skills. That's it. It's gone. Nice, neat tummy, all uh, tight for show jumping. That's right. With the operation complete, everyone is now anxiously waiting for Freddie to wake up. OK, he's got to take the leg. Yep. Good boy, Freddie. Good lad. This can be a really dangerous time for horses because they can react erratically. They're very strong. And so he can go from being an animal that's just been fixed to an animal that's very easily broken. Come on. Mummy's just over there. Good boy. It's almost over now, so hopefully he'll get up and be a bit wobbly, but then Mum can look after him. Everything will be all right. That fingers crossed. You get. Come on, buddy, you can do it. There we are. Lovely. Good boy. Freddy takes such a long time to wake up, but slowly he comes right. He came struggling towards mum. Yeah, I think he wants a feed, doesn't he? He wants a he feed. Wants, he wants solace. And that's an absolutely glorious moment. It's a real relief to see him up and then suckling from his mum. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> He's gone to the milk bar. He's gone to the that's milk right. bar. So, Di, that was uh, quite intense. I must say, I was probably it's past, but it's over now. as nervous, yeah. though, as... Well, I think I possibly was more nervous than you. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Scott has done brilliant. <laughs> and he's been nice with him, and that means a lot. Good boy, Freddie. I must admit, I've absolutely loved it today. Di's an incredible woman. We're in a nice, warm shed performing an incredible surgery on a beautiful animal with a great result. And my relief, I think, was just as much as Di's. <laughs> Hopefully that's his expressing his, uh, his uh, yeah, happiness yes. at our work. <laughs> Not bad, City Slicker. Good job. <laughs> With 
with his first horse surgery behind him, Scott has arrived back at the practice to help out with Little Tootsie's surgery. Hey, Joe. Hi, Joe. What's happening? Um, this is Toots I chatted to you about. So we've just done the x-ray. Bladder's full of stones. Ooh, yeah, no. poor little man. So just like one or two stones? No, literally looks like sort of 30 in there, I think. So the more help, the better to, to get them all out, I think. No worries. OK, well, I'll go and de-farm and I'll be back in a sec. See you in a bit. Lovely. <laughs> We removed all of the larger stones, and I think it's the, the biggest haul I've had from a, a bladder so far. All right, let's close this boy up. <laughs> Lovely job. It's going to be a, a bit of a recovery because there's obviously so much swelling and, and inflammation on the bladder wall. It's going to take a little while for that to, to settle down, but he should make a full recovery. Thank you very much for your help. Oh, more than, more than happy to do so. <laughs> Being involved in this surgery, you might think, oh, wow, it's opening up a bladder of a dog and pulling out stones. Well, for me, it was a relief. It was great to be in four walls at a roof, not covered in rain, not covered in poo, and doing something that I know how to do really well. What do you think I've got for me next? It's quarter past five, it could be anything. So uh, I'm sure they'll have something in store. As long as you've got your wellies on, I'm sure it'll be covered. <laughs> It's Scott's last day in Wales, and the team at the practice have one final job for the visiting vet. I just had a phone call from one of the young farm vets, Vicky, when she needs my help. I have no idea what kind of animal I'm dealing with, but I'm looking forward to seeing what she's got in store. Right, Vicky, the cavalry's here. Oh, I've got muscles. Right. Hope you've uh, had your Weetabix this morning. OK, why? Oh, we've got quite a big ram to uh, deal with uh, today. Oh, a ram. Yeah. Really? This is Codley's Animal Rescue, where owner Val takes in unwanted animals. Hi there, Val. Hi. I'm Scott. Hi, Scott. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. We take in animals that have been abused or neglected, and we, this is their forever home. People contact us when they know that there's an animal in need, because they know we'll go and get it. We just love what we do. But it's a ram called Gordon that needs immediate attention. When he came, he was just called Rammy. I didn't like the name, so I, I put a thing out on my Facebook page and asked for ideas, and uh, somebody suggested Gordon. Gordon Rammy it was. Six months ago, Gordon was rescued from an abattoir. To avoid injuring himself and his fellow animals, the feisty ram's large horns were removed under anaesthetic. I thought you might like to see these of what came off him. Wow, that's impressive. They so weigh seven pounds each. Gordon has been thriving in his new home, but recently rescuer Val has noticed a problem. I went out to the field today to check on them and I saw he was bleeding from his horn. He obviously needs help from you guys. So how are we going to go about catching this chap? Um, I think that's your job, really. Um, into this corner, just muscles. Right, <laughs> right, wow, so it's very technical. <laughs> Just muscle, that's all we need today. Okay. I'm going to enjoy watching this, because <laughs> I did it earlier. Gordon is very feisty. When I was treating him earlier, it was like buckaroo around the pen. <laughs> OK, well, should we just get stuck into it, just bolt this? I would open the gate. Right. It's much easier. <laughs> sure, OK, fair enough. OK. Here we go. Yeah, that was easier, yes. I should have not said anything and just let him fall over, but I thought it was common sense. Why climb it when you can walk through it? Hello, Gordon. Keep that infamous temper in check. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck, guys. You're going to need it. <laughs> OK. Come on, mate. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Come on, champ. This way. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Good boy. OK, good boy. Oh, you <laughs> Who's winning here? Uh, well, it's sort of a tie at the moment. Good. Wow, right. that looks disgusting. Yeah. I'm really close to his head. You can see there's a lot of discharge, there's maggots present. Alongside that, it really smells. Fortunately, um, Val's found this quite soon, so it hasn't done too much damage. It's all right, mate. Good lad. What do you think of those fine ingredients, Gordon Ramy? Hey, is it going to sort you out? I reckon. Here we go. All right, be brave, mate. We want to try and uh, 
dry up all the infection that's there. I get that growth to shrink back and, and then uh, try and seal off those holes so nothing can go back down into there. It's all right, mate. Good boy, brave boy. Scott really does have a great affinity with animals and uh, I've never seen that with Gordon, especially with somebody he hasn't met before. This is just some antibiotic spray to uh, help with any infection. Looks great. Yeah, good man. Good boy. Make him feel a lot better. I was a bit dubious when I rang Scott as to whether his uh, muscle factor would be advantageous for me. Hopefully in about an hour or two, mate, you're going to feel much better. But I think his allure to the animals was probably more than the muscles, uh, to be honest. And I think uh, his sweet whisperings in uh, Gordon's ear helped. If those drugs will start kicking in, you'll feel better. Back to your feisty self, eh? Val will have to keep a close eye on Gordon's wounds. Good boy, Gordo. Good lad. And they should heal in a couple of weeks. Ah, oh, he was a perfect gentleman yeah. in the end, wasn't he? Just like Gordon Ramsay, obsessed with food. <laughs> And Scott's not the only one who's up early this morning. Joyce is on her way to the practice after a long night missing her beloved dog. I'm back to pick Toots up after his operation yesterday. So, big smile on the face today. And it oh, seems little better. Toots is hey. just as excited. You're feeling better. Oh, good boy. Should go and see your mum? Hey, who's this then? Ah, oh, who's this? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> Pleased to see you, I think. Oh, oh little man. Oh, good oh, boy. Oh, you don't know how happy I am. Hmm? No, it's a really good feeling. Can't stop smiling now that I've got him back. You heavy little monkey. <laughs> I know, I think he's gone away. <laughs> he's done so well. He's really bright this morning. He's really happy. Well. Doesn't seem uncomfortable at all. So, um... You're not going to talk to me, are you? No. <laughs> it's all over and done with. Just want to get him home now and... cuddles on the sofa tonight. And that's it. Come on. There's a good boy. Going home now, aren't you? Yes, you are. Come on, dear sweetheart. Come on. And it's also time for Scott to hand in his wellies and head home. His time in rural Wales has been an eye-opening experience for a city vet dreaming of a life in the country one day. He's got a lovely temperament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I've absolutely loved every minute of my time here in rural Wales. That's an experience I haven't had in 17 years. Can I make a farm bet of you yet, Scott? <laughs> The farm vets and nurses have just been so inspiring to work with. The animals, impressive and beautiful. I think I possibly was more nervous than you. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Hello. But I think it's been the wonderfully warm and resilient Welsh people and the fantastically beautiful landscapes that have captured my heart and made me think that I could make a go of it as a farm animal vet. But for now, I've got to get back to my family, back to the practices in Richmond, but I know I'll definitely be back. <laughs>